beat-em-ups are thin on the ground at the moment. Seriously thin. But even if it was going head-to-head -head with Dead or Alive 2 or Tekken Tag, this PAL version of Bloody Roll 3 would easily hold its own. Some subtle improvements mean it's a step above the Japanese version. In Bloody Roar 3, you take control of a series of 12 fighters to begin with to battle others into ultimate humiliation. The hook of this title is that all of the characters have the ability to transform themselves into a bizarre and deadly creature. Perform a series of damaging attacks, and when your meter is high enough, morph into your ugly, animalistic alter ego and continue to beat all the bad guys into a bloody pulp. The majority of special moves and combinations can be learned relatively easily with some practice, and as always, it pays to use your blocking button at the right time. The action is furious enough to have your fingers and wrists aching like you've got carpal tunnel syndrome, so it's well worth learning combo attacks in the practice mode. Most are of the type that date back to Street Fighter days. Rotate the direction pad a quarter or halfway round while pressing an attack button to execute a bruise-inducing sequence of moves. It also pays to use your beast mode thoughtfully, although when your opponent beasts up, you do feel intimidated enough to get beasty yourself as a defensive mechanism. Characters respond well and quickly, and the movement feels really swift. Take giant leaps from one side of the arena, execute floor sweeps, unleash uppercuts, and deliver an all-round face pounding. You'll soon be tapping more chins than a Chinese phone book. Bloody Roar 3 isn't all button bashing, though. There are situations where you'll need to be more skillful with your face stomping techniques. Unleashing a special attack at the wrong moment will leave you wide open to a battering from your adversary. Bloody Roar 3 is brash, crude, loud, and it rocks hard like all the best fighters. It's not about subtlety and atmosphere, it's all about action and violence. PSI 2 gives it 86%. Ever wondered what it would be like to have the ability to play your favorite games without any boundaries? Ever wondered how your friend breaks through to the highest levels of every game or beats your scores with ease? He probably didn't want you to know about Equalizer Extreme. Within the millions of lines of code that make up your favorite video games, there exist variables and vulnerabilities. With the ability to manipulate the variables, you have ultimate power over anything and everything. Infinite health, infinite lives, all weapons, all items, all characters. You go anywhere, you do anything, and you kill everything. The Equalizer Extreme Video Game Enhancer is available in stores now. Constant code updates at codejunkies.com ensure that you'll always have the power to beat the game. We wanted to give you a taste of the Equalizer Extreme's ultimate power. Once you see how Equalizer can change your gaming experience for these titles, just imagine what it can do for the rest of your games. In this issue, access a selection of the greatest codes for two top titles, Duke Nukem Land of the Babes and Time Crisis Project Titan. You can win one of ten bundles featuring a copy of the excellent fighting game Bloody Raw 3, a Bloody Raw 3 t-shirt and a Cytec PX4000 controller. To enter, answer this simple question. What is the name for the mythical creatures that transform from people into wolves at every full moon? Is it A. Sheepdog and Wolf B. Airwolf or C. Werewolf If you think you know the answer, call the competition line now on 09064 77 4480 and follow the online instructions. Calls cost 60p a minute at all times, so get permission from whoever pays the bills before you dial. You'll be asked for your answer and for your name and address. Lines will close at midnight on Monday the 2nd of July 2001. Winners will be picked at random by our computer and announced on the Code Junkies website www.codejunkies.com. There are quite a few noticeable additions to the PS2 port of this furry little number. Compared to its Dreamcast cousin, the PS2 version of Fur Fighters has been tarted up, you might say. However, the gaming aim remains untouched. Recover the Fur Fighter families, mini baby versions of the Fur Fighter gang, and defeat the evil General Vigo. Rufus, Juliet, Bungalow, Tweak, Rico and Chang are your main players, with over 25 types of character appearing over the game in all. Our six sharpshooters are integral to the game, all possessing their own unique skills that must be exploited when progressing through the increasingly difficult spoof gangster settings. Whilst you're mixing platform-style puzzling and shoot-em-up action, look out for what resembles small bubbles. These each contain the remaining playable characters, so whenever you need to change, just step inside and do a swap. 
At the start, the General, a blue walrus, will give you a subway token so you can catch the train to New Quack City. Heading for the World Quack Center, where Vigo's organized a dual heist, you'll need to gun down the bad guys, collect as many power-ups, ammo and diamond-shaped tokens as possible, and rescue any babies you find on the way. This action-adventure is reasonably fun and is at times fast. The improved artificial intelligence is a welcome enhancement, making gameplay more of a challenge. The fur fighters have a good arsenal of weapons, including a pistol, a shotgun, a plasma gun, and a rocket launcher, to name a few. Also, make sure you pick up any kit dropped by the baddies. Be quick, though, because it will soon disappear. Ultimately, while professionally executed, distinctively styled, and boasting an imaginative concept, it never finds the spark to make it one of the top PS2 titles. Never quite becomes more than the sum of its parts. It's good, not great. PSI 2 gives the game 72%. Forget about MP3 players, why not create your own banging tunes? Yamaha's QY100 Music Sequencer is a professional digital recording studio measuring about the same size as a VHS videotape. The world's first palm-sized 16-track music recording facility is indispensable for the on-the-move music production and songwriting. It houses a fully-featured XG synthesizer and a huge database of inbuilt musical styles to help break any creative block. You can even pop the battery-powered QY100 into your bag or backpack and create and play music anywhere, anytime. Cruise along in the open air, enjoying the bracing breeze in your face. Smart has presented a show car without doors, roof and conventional windscreen, bearing the name of Crossblade. Smart's latest prototype is aimed at customers who like to have fun and enjoy open-top driving. Following the Roadster and Coupe, this two-seater once again demonstrates the diverse range of possibilities embraced by Smart's concept for the compact city car. The Smart Crossblade is intended to provide drivers with an exhilarating feel of motion such as they can otherwise only experience on rollerblades or skateboards. Gauntlet Dark Legacy is defiantly old school in its gameplay. Yes, it has knobs and whistles in the form of top sound effects and huge spellcasting pyrotechnics. Yes, it has some enormous and well-constructed levels that wouldn't have been possible on a less powerful console. In fact, in all areas, it simply exudes professionalism. Where it really wins out, though, is in the gameplay. You take control of one of the eight characters that are initially available and dive into the first level. You have three simple objectives. Kill everything, collect crystals, and find as much treasure as possible in the eight huge realms. The enemies come faster and thicker than a speeding bus full of idiots. You just have to wade in there and hack them to bits. The key is to knock out the generators, which create the monsters, then move on to the next one. Attacks vary with distance, so you can step in and go for frantic hand-to-hand -hand combat in the middle of a group of zombies, or step back and use the ranged attack. Magic is never short of dramatic, but the effects don't reach spectacular heights. This is probably to ensure no slowdown in the excellent four-player cooperative mode. It's hard to see what's going on sometimes in multiplayer, but to make things really tricky, players can enable friendly fire to either stun or actually hurt other players. Prepare for some real rivalry as you argue over the treasure. The game encourages you to wander around the levels and the realms as you open them up. It's even possible to go back to an earlier, easy level, top up on health and wealth, and then take on a boss. Gauntlet Dark Legacy plays very well and is nicely balanced to make it just hard enough. And there are three difficulty levels. It has the knack of sucking you in, making you want to play it all, unlock every item, play every character. It's an extremely satisfying gaming experience. PSI 2 gives the game 84%. A matter of days ago, the most eagerly awaited PS2 game so far, Gran Turismo 3, was released in Japan. The point of GT3 is that you're always striving to own your dream car by working through about 65 different competitions. Although not quite matching the selection offered by GT2, there are still well in excess of 100 cars to choose from, all recreated in minute detail and shown off to their fullest potential in the virtual car dealership. Graphically, the cars are the stars of the show. Put them out on the track and the whole experience takes on a nearly video-like quality. 
there are 32 variations of tracks to wreak havoc on, including reverse modes. Pop-up appears to have become a thing of the past, and so for the most part have jaggies, and this is surely due to Polyphony being the first to finally master the PS2's much-vaunted anti-aliasing capacity. As with every other aspect of the game, the handling and gameplay have improved beyond recognition. Gran Turismo mode allows you to get deep into the game, and here you notice how intelligent the driving has become. The variation from car to car is amazing, each with its own characteristics, and every modification causes subtle changes in handling and performance. The handling and performance is where GT3 really shines. There isn't even a hint of a pause or slowdown as you hurtle around the tracks and slide into the corners. Your racing opponents are intelligent and at times sadistic, wasting no opportunity to punish mistakes by shunting you off into the barriers. Arcade mode offers instant access to an impressive array of vehicles. It also provides you with the opportunity to unlock new cars and gain access to more tracks. Whilst GT3 is a vast improvement on GT2, both in terms of gameplay and looks, nothing really original has been added, which will eventually be required if the series is to continue and evolve. But this is the finest racing simulation currently available on any medium. PSI2 gives it 96%. Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 were massive hits on the PC, and Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, a brand new game, is heading for the PlayStation 2. We talked to Interplay spokesman Doug Johns about how the inimitable Baldur's Gate gameplay style will transfer to everyone's favorite console. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance on the PlayStation 2 is an action RPG. So it has elements of the RPG world like Dungeons and Dragons, Orcs and Skeletons and stuff. But rather than it being a hardcore stats-based RPG, it's much more action-orientated, so there's more hacking and slashing, spells that are really big and visual. It's much easier to get into and access. There isn't too much similarity between the PC and the PS2 version. Uh, basically, Baldur's Gate, the name, is a city that's been created within the Dungeons and Dragons world by Bioware, the people of the developers behind Baldur's Gate. Um, and that's about where it stops. Um, the PC version is very much hardcore, lots of stats, party based. You know, you're going to play it for like six hours in a night before saving it off. The PS2 versions, it's much more pick up, access it, put it down within half an hour if you want to. Much more action, much more console. There aren't that many RPG style games on the PS2. It's much more, you know, uh, lots of racing games, lots of fighting games, that sort of stuff. Um, so there isn't too much to choose from. I think what's going to make it good for us is we've got the official AD&D rules, um, which is, is great to have in the background of the game. Something you're not going to see, but will affect the gameplay. Um, and we've also got Bioware behind the game, their proven developer, so technically it's going to look really good. The AD official rules being implemented in the game, uh, it's very important on a couple of levels. Uh, one, it's good because people familiar with AD&D will like it if it's associated with that. But also, to people who aren't really familiar with AD&D, it's going to have a lot of rules that sit underneath the game that you won't see but will affect the gameplay. You know, the AD&D rules have been set up and tweaked and made to work over like more than 20 years. So, you know, that's an advantage we're going to have over anyone else who are trying to make their own RPG within a year. We, you know, we've got a 19 year advantage. As well as the one player mode, you also have a two player option, cooperative play. Um, that won't be split screen, that'll be on the same screen. But as you roam around the dungeon, um, if you move away from each other, it'll actually start to pan out so you get more of the screen on the screen. Um, obviously, it's not going to allow you to actually go either ends of these huge dungeons. Uh, one, because you know, it'd be too small on the screen, and two, if you're playing cooperatively, why would you want to do that? So, you know, it, it's on the same screen and it works very well like that. A lot of the spells you're going to come up against in Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance are from the AD&D world. So if you're familiar with that, you've got Magic Missile, Burning Hands, Cure Light Wounds, a lot of stuff that you're very familiar with. Magic Missile looks great, there's lots of missiles come out and they home in on your enemy and they explode. But there are a few extra things that have actually been added in. So there will be new things, it's not just all the old AD&D stuff regurgitated, it's the best from that, plus a load more.
In each issue of PSI2, we'll be bringing you the coolest game saves for the latest PS2 games for you to download to your PS2 memory card. Once you've unlocked these game-busting saves, you'll be gaming like never before. Downloading the saves is simple. Firstly, make sure you have a PS2-compatible memory card inserted into memory card slot 1 of your PS2. Your memory card needs to have been inserted before you boot the PSI2 disk. If you haven't done so, then switch off your PS2, insert your memory card and reboot. Before using the PS2 cheats on this disk, you must have an existing game save on your memory card for the appropriate game. Your existing game save will be overwritten when you activate the PS2 cheats on this disk. You have been warned. To download, simply select the game save you want to download and hit the Download to Memory Card button. The status bar at the bottom of the screen will display progress of the download. When your save is fully downloaded, the message Download Complete OK will appear. Simply press X to confirm. Switch off your PS2 and insert the relevant game CD. Then simply load in your new game save as you would normally from your memory card. It really is that simple. All the saves stored on the CD have been developed by a selection of the greatest gamers around, so you're guaranteed the coolest saves ever. What could be easier? In this issue, we bring you the coolest saves for Quake 3 Revolution and Unreal Tournament. Also this month, we have four new YAR Basic games. Pong, Squash 2, Mindmaster and Nibbles 2. Simply download each one to your memory card as you would a game save. Boot up YAR Basic from the demo disc that came with your PlayStation 2 and then load from your memory card whichever game you want to play. Enjoy! Shadow Man 2 is coming to PS2. It's the sequel to the trippy voodoo story of Mike Leroy, a man who gets mixed up in murder and black magic after having the Mask of Shadows, a strange voodoo artifact, implanted in his chest. As the Shadow Man, he remains to walk in between the worlds of the live side and dead side as a zombie warrior slave. We have limited info on gameplay at the moment, but we do know that it's little more than a month or two away from release. This time around, the developers may be able to explore its dark and tortured potential to the full, employing soft skinning techniques where instead of having edges of a polygon outlining the body of a creature, the creature is built up from a skeleton. Old characters will make a return such as Mama Nettie, the 400-year-old voodoo priestess in a 20-year-old's body, and Jaunty, the skull-headed gatekeeper of the dead side. There'll be some brand new characters to watch out for, including Thomas Deacon, a wheelchair-using private investigator and demon hunter. We'll have more info for you next issue.